Hey everyone, welcome back to Homegrown Passion. As you can tell, it's a nice sunny day here in the greenhouse. So in today's video, we're going to have an update on the light meter. Uh, Nathan was out here a couple weeks ago and we tried to check to see how, what the percentage of the light coming in through the new plastic, but it was a cloudy day and we couldn't get an accurate reading because the clouds kept bouncing back and forth. We were running back and forth a couple times. So I went ahead and did another one when it was a bright, clear day. So you'll see what the percentages that we're getting, getting a big difference from what we got last year. And I got an update on the uh, spinach and how it germinated and how well it's doing for me. And a little update on the greenhouse and tomatoes and everything else we do around here. So stay tuned. Well, in the last video I did, I showed you putting the spinach seeds into the hydrogen peroxide mixture with the uh, paper towels and the paper plates here. Well, now this one is going to show me seeding them, not seeding them, but planting them in the oasis cubes. And then it's going to be a couple days and then I'll show you how they grow here in the oasis cubes and then how big they are when I get them in the channels. So here we go. Okay, so I am going to uncover these guys here, open up the paper towels. Oh, I see some radicals. These are about 48 hours old. And you can see there's quite a few that have the radicals, the little root coming out, but there's ones that haven't germinated. So that's why this is the most foolproof way to get your spinach started, that you don't waste any of the growing medium and time and effort to get them going. So what I'm going to do now is take my tweezers, because it's a little bit easier for me, and I'm going to Pull them up, see? Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that radical, and he's got a little bit of leaves coming up. And I'm going to put them in to the oasis cube, nice and gently. He's trying to pop out there. So yeah, these guys, some of them really went crazy. This one's really got a big one, so it's a little bit harder when they're that big. So if you put them in there gently, they will take off for you. But yeah, as you can see, there's some bad ones, so gently do it. And see this guy, nice little radical there. Just drop them in the hole and of course I use the multi dimple hole because it's a little bigger and you have a little bit more room to work with it so I'm going to go through this whole paper plate here and just pull the germinated ones out you know it may take a little bit more time but it's well worth it and sometimes if I have extra I will go back and double seed them because uh, the spinach you know because you cut it and then you let it grow back again it can handle two or three plants in each hole don't want to do too many more than that then it gets a little bit harder to uh, cut it back whoops that guy lost his seed covering there we go here's a nice little one with the radical just sticking out so I'll stick them in there so I'll go through this and get them all planted and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done so I just wanted to tell you one more thing uh, I'm pulling out all the ones with the radicals coming out. I am going to cover these guys back up and put the lid back on because some of them take a little bit longer to sprout and I've gone back you know, a day later and there's been more sprouted that I'm able to use and plant into the channels. So I have them all in the oasis cubes. You see some of them are a little bit bigger than others. But I'm going to put these out in the control tunnel, put a lid on them for a day or so, just check them periodically to make sure they don't get leggy and then I'll get them out underneath the nursery channels. And then after that they'll go into the uh, main channels. So I got some seeding here to do for my CSA program. You know me, I try everything. And I trialed this last summer and it worked really good. It's um, Kohlrabi Quick Star. And it did really good in the summertime. So I'm gonna plant it for my CSA for the wintertime because what would be better than some fresh Kohlrabi. This, I noticed when I was trialing it that I can only put two seeds in each one of these holes for, the, uh, for it to grow nice bulbs and they get big. And then I could just harvest two bulbs as one serving, I guess you could call it for the um, CSA, so one for each box. So I'm doing it with tweezers here because I don't want to waste any seeds. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's well worth it. So this is just like seeding all the rest of them. I just use tweezers because I only want to get two seeds in each hole. So as I'm seeding these with tweezers, because I always get mixed up with what hole I just got done with, I make, make a little mark, as you can see there, to show what hole will be the next one. So I'm confident putting two seeds in each hole because this has a germination percentage of 96%. So that's a pretty high percentage. There's other ones that I do like fennel that has like a 76 or 75% germination rate. So then you always want to plant more. I found this fennel in my refrigerator. It's four years old, but I did plant it last year for the farm market and it grew. So I'm going to try some again this winter. And you can see there the germination rate is 74%. So I'm definitely going to do 25% more than what I need to make sure I have enough to fill my order. 
So today we're going to measure the uh, sunlight to see how much sunlight's outside here and how much is in the greenhouse. When we tried to do it with Nathan a week or so ago. It was a super cloudy day and clouds were coming over and we we're trying to run back and forth in the greenhouse so we didn't get any good readings. So today there's no sunshine. All so right, so Nathan Donnelly with Crop King out here at Bradwood Farms today. And yesterday we went through and we pulled new poly on the greenhouse and so we're going to go through and see how our light transmission see with new poly versus the old poly that was on that we did back in December, if you remember. So looks like we've gotten a break in the clouds. And as of right now, with the light core light meter here, I've got the bubble level leveled up and we're getting 1495 out here outside the greenhouse today. So, so if we remember 1495, we'll run in the greenhouse real quick, get our light reading inside and see how what percentage of light we have coming through. Sounds good. What are you doing? You getting the bubble level? Yep, getting leveled up here. So this way it's level and you get an accurate reading to compare. Yep. All right. So now that we're inside the greenhouse here, everything's coming up. You can see all the different clouds and the wispies and getting in front of the sun, so it's messing up our light meter. So I'm outside here, I'm sitting on the cement pad that Doug had poured for his wood miser, and I'm going to go inside the greenhouse and sit on the cement pad there so I can get um, comparable readings there. So right now the PAR is 584.4. So I'm going to write that down because I'll never remember that number when I get back inside. So now I'm going to go inside and see what it is in there. So now I'm back in the greenhouse here and I'm getting my light meter going here and I'm sitting in the same spot, almost in the same direction, make sure there's no shadows over here. And I'm at 475 for um, the light meter in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my formula here and calculate it out and I'll let you guys know what my percentage is. So I have an 81% light transmission here. So new plastic's doing a really good job, a lot better than it was last year. And I think it was down in the 50s. So. My plants should grow a lot better this winter. Looking forward to it. Here's the spinach I planted the other day. It's been five days out here in the uh, nursery now. I did have it in the control tunnel for a day and a half or so. And I keep it bottom watered and it probably put it out into the channels in about a week. Just let it get a little bit bigger. You see these guys are doing really good. And over here I have some Swiss chard I planted or seeded. Here's my tomatoes that did the 100%. And here's some um, Shinuku that has to go into the channels this week. Here's the kohlrabi I seeded and that was six days ago and you can tell it came up really nice. Just have like two or three plants in each tray or each um, cube. So I should go in the channels probably in another week and again I'm bottom watering everything right now. I don't have my nursery channel set up but things are looking good here in the sunny greenhouse. So it's been a while since I walked you guys through the greenhouse so I thought I'd do that. Here's some tatsoi. I'm going to be harvesting this on Monday for delivery to my food shed. It came out pretty good. And then down here I have some, oh, what is it? Oh, tokabacana, the open head cabbage. And it's always a lighter green color, so it's not nutrient derived. It's just a little bit lighter green color. And then over here I have mini bok choy. And up here I have Rosie and you can tell we've been having some really nice sunny days because look at the reds pop so cool so I wanted to show everybody what happens when you put something in the channel when it's a little too big and a little bit too leggy luckily the roots weren't bound up so I didn't have to rip them apart so they're not stunted too bad but you can tell they kind of fallen over but they'll end up growing up straight so it'll look kind of funky but they'll still taste good it will be a good harvest in about three four weeks well, I hope you guys liked today's video. I plan on doing a lot more updates to show you how the progress of how things grow and what they look like at the different stages and how long to leave them in the channels and how long in the oasis cubes and just everything. So I want to do that. And I'm standing outside here because, like I said, it's a nice, bright, sunny day. Doug's been working on his uh, sawmill here, getting it all um, back in line again. And he's been cutting wood because he's going to make a really nice front porch for my uh, head house here. And then he's going to take this beautiful piece of walnut that he pulled out of the river. He said it looked like crap on the outside. It was all rotten and everything. But once he cut into it, a beautiful cant right there. So he's going to use that for timber framing my garage. So stay tuned for some more videos on that kind of stuff. So like always, leave me any questions, comments, and suggestions down below. And we'll see you guys next video. One more thing. Happy Thanksgiving.